All right, now let's just change directions. Let's just give prebiotic chemistry proposals a chance. You say, Tour, you're just too hard on it. Okay. <clears throat> let's assume that all the building blocks of life, not just the precursors, but all the building blocks, could be made in high degrees of purity, including homochirality, where applicable, for all the carbohydrates, all the amino acids, all the nucleic acids, and all the lipids. Let's further assume that they're comfortably, comfortably stored in cool caves, away from the sunlight, away from oxygen, so as to be stable against environmental degradation. Let's further assume that all existed in one corner of the Earth, not separated by thousands of kilometers, and not on different planets. All in the same cave. We'll give them that. All, of, all in the same cave. All chiral and pure. We'll give it to them. And that they all existed not just in the same square kilometer, but in neighboring pools where they can conveniently and somehow selectively mix as needed. Now what? How do they assemble? Without enzymes, the mechanisms do not exist for their assembly. It will not happen, and there is no synthetic chemist that would claim differently, because to do so would take enormous stretches of conjecturing beyond all that is realized in the field of chemical sciences. You can't do this in chemistry. All right, now let's assemble the dream team. You got good professors here, let's assemble the dream team. Let's further assume that the world's top 100 synthetic chemists, top 100 biochemists, and top 100 evolutionary biologists combine forces into the limitlessly funded dream team. <laughs> the dream team has all the carbohydrates, lipids, amino acids, and nucleic acids stored in freezers in their laboratories. Taking it out of caves, you can use their labs. All are in 100% enantiomeric purity. Even give the team all the reagents they wish, the most advanced laboratories, and the analytical facilities, and complete scientific literature and synthetic and natural yet non-living coupling agents. Now ask the dream team to assemble their building blocks into a living system. Nothing complex, just a single cell. They'll merely scratch their heads and walk away frustrated. Remember, call me a liar if I'm lying. <clears throat> so let's help the dream team out by providing the polymerized forms, the polypeptides, all the enzymes they desire, the polysaccharides, all the carbohydrates, all hooked up. DNA, RNA, in any sequence. I'll even give you the sequence. Whatever sequence you want. You tell me the sequence. You, you got it. Ask the dream team to assemble those into a living system. The level of sophistication in even the simplest of possible living cells is so chemically complex that we are even more clueless now than with anything discussed regarding prebiotic chemistry or macroevolution. The dream team will not know where to start. Moving all this off Earth does not solve the problem because our physical laws are universal. You see the problem for the chemist? Welcome to my world. This is what I'm confronted with every day. And then people will flippantly say, oh, the, you know, these are made from small organic compounds by the foremost reaction from formaldehyde. Oh, okay, I get it now. <clears throat> so here's a summary. Those that think that scientists understand the details of life's origin are wholly uninformed. Nobody understands. Maybe one day we will, but that day is far from today. So to make ad hominem attacks upon those who are skeptical of the science to date can be inhibitory to the progress of science. Would it not be helpful to express to students the massive gaps in our understanding so that they, as the next generation of academic soldiers, could seek to propel the field upon a firmer and possibly a radically different scientific basis, rather than upon increasingly ambitious extrapolations that are entirely acceptable and unacceptable in the practice of chemistry? The basis upon which we as scientists are relying is so shaky that it would be best to openly state the situation for what it is, a mystery. That might catalyze some fresh scientific thought on abiogenesis. I was just saw a presentation by a Nobel Prize winner modeling the action of enzymes. And I walked up to him afterward. I said, I'm writing an article up entitled Abiogenesis Nightmare. Where do these enzymes come from? He says, these things are synthesized biologically. I said, no, no, starting from the beginning, where did these th things come from? He says, what did you write in your article? I said, I said, it's a mystery. He said, that's exactly what it is. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Why do so few chemists speak up regarding difficulties with origin of life? Few think about it intently. They're just too busy with other things. 
I mean, we got one, one synthetic chemist here, the guy's trying to get tenure. I mean, he's got a lot of things to think about. He doesn't think about abiogenesis. How often do you wake up in the morning thinking about abiogenesis? Not very often. Yeah. He got a lot of other things to do. He got a lot of emails to answer. <laughs> they think that someone else understands. That's what they think. They think someone else understands. It's just like you. You think someone else understands. I'm telling you, nobody understands it. It's viewed as the only ball game in town. Okay, we don't have another thing. You shouldn't shoot it down, tour. You shouldn't shoot it down until you have an alternative proposal. Oh, really? Is that what we teach our students? Do we teach our students that you can't contest with that mechanism until you have a better one? No, if the mechanism doesn't explain the facts, you discard that mechanism or you change it to fit the facts. That's your proposed mechanism. You don't say, until you have something better. No, you just shoot the thing down. And also for fear of being ostracized and fear of reprisals. Some think it's even justified to go after people who won't buy into this. They think it's even justified. They deserve to be disenfranchised. It's a sad state of affairs. When will the scientific community confess to the world that they are clueless on life's origin, that the emperor has no clothes? When will they say this? Here's what Max Planck had to say. We, we, we have Planck's constant, the great physicist. Here's what he had to say. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die. <laughs> this is what I think is going to happen. I don't think that those that are entrenched and keep saying that, they, that there's plenty of understanding when there's not, and when you push them on it, you see not only that there is little, that there is none. None. You're going to have to wait for them to die. Here's the hope that I see, though. Science is self-correcting. If abiogenesis proposals are correct, the chemical descriptions will become evident. As of today, in my opinion, there is only evidence on how it did not occur. So further investigations, investigation is warranted. We must continue to do research in this area. And here's the great hope. The younger generation has a deeper sense of social fairness and justice, and they are less impressed with conformal academic fluff. Once the young progress into positions of influence, they will correct the injustices that have been thrust upon those that dare to question the mainstream scientific establishment. If you dare question the mainstream scientific establishment as I am doing today, you will be held out of certain societies. How do I know? because I was told I wouldn't get into certain societies because of my views on these things. I was told this to my face behind closed doors. And I said, then I will speak up. Then I will speak up. And the words of Groucho Marx are greatly comforting to me. When he said, I don't want to be part of any organization that would have me. <clears throat> You young people have a much greater sense of social justice and fairness than my generation has. You feel the pain when people are disenfranchised. You're going to get into positions of influence. Change it. Change it. Say it when you don't understand it. Say it. I don't understand it either. And let there be a groundswell of correction here. 